Hey Josh, how's it going? Finals. Uh, I take you're on um, what's it called quarter system then, because uh, I guess that would make sense, right? Finals right before uh, spring break is my guess, Josh. So, ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. I think, uh, yeah, you're starting your, I believe. Oh, nice. Happy early birthday. Uh, let's see. I think my friend has the same birthday as you, actually. Uh, yeah, I think March 16th. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so happy early birthday, Josh. Um, you know, hopefully once you're done with finals and uh, good luck on the finals, by the way, uh, you'll have a chance to test out the, uh, the new list. Um, I have played this exact list once. So far in yesterday's league, uh, actually ran two leagues. The first league actually had um, three ley lines instead of, uh, and then I, and no crop rotation, no mind break trap. Uh, I e I went four one in that league and probably could have five would but I misboarded against um, eight mulch or the new lands variant. It's more like a combo deck actually, but. Uh, Long story short, I boarded in Thoughtseize because I figured, oh, they're more like an A plus B deck. Um, even if that's the case, uh, it's actually, they, they, it, they play out kind of like Moon Stompy or like those Stompy shells where Thoughtseize felt really slow and those decks either often have Blood Moon or um, Wasteland as well. And in this case, Lance has Wasteland. So not really what I wanted to see. Uh, I did beat it as well. Um, in another match in the same league, but I immediately uh, realized after the first league that I definitely wanted a crop rotation in the list. Not so much because, um, I mean, it helps that it it, it uh, is good against Merilage decks because you can get Caracas or get Bog, but it was more so because I ran into some decks uh, like Goblins, for instance, or or um, there's decks like humans where you just don't have enough cards to bring in, right? Because none of the cards are relevant or you, you prefer not to bring it in. So you just want a generically flexible card in crop rotation. Um, the reason why this is the case is because if, uh, for those of you who are, tune, who are uh, tuning in, I got the idea actually two nights ago and I you know tested it yesterday to an extent. Um, because lately, I have not really felt like I've needed Assassin Trophy. Um, because Baseju does a lot of the same things. And while it's nice to have more copies, um, I did notice like having to fletch, fetch uh, black mana was sometimes not convenient. Is probably the best way I can, I can uh, explain it. Like while you can do it, it is just, I would prefer not to. And I got the idea, well, what if we just cut trophy? It does. Um, so I will address that in a second. So when Boseju got um, spoiled, uh, the cabal that I talked to, um, namely, uh, you know, Mr. C Mr. Old School Turn 1 Combo himself, Jax, uh, mentioned that Trophy is essentially, well, Baseju is essentially a huge upgrade over Trophy as long as you don't need to destroy creatures. Now, obviously, Blue Red Delver is the, you know, most represented deck in the format. And for a long time, at least even during, up until Eternal Weekend and just lately, um, it is the most flexible card because Run of Foul is just a horrendous card in my opinion. Like, I... When I've run it, it's not because I want to. It's just because it's just like another card of that variety I need or want. But Trophy was the answer for um, Murktide region. And that is the premier threat in the format, in my opinion, right now. Um, it's it's kind of like Tormogorf when, uh, like, maybe like five, ten years ago, whatever it was, where Tormogorf was being splashed in Murfolk, for instance, just because it was a powerful threat. Now, Murktide is along those lines where it is as far as a beater is concerned uh the best beater and closer in the game um i don't know i don't think it has more utility for instance than like elvis reclaimer but you know very different animals we hear right like there's no doubt that is the premier uh <laughs> um 
I think the closest one is probably uh, either the Wildborn Preserver or I, I think the Jesp Jespera uh, Sentinel is probably better um, because it's a one drop and makes mana. I don't really like the Wildborn uh, because it's a two drop and doesn't make mana, right? But um, I believe that, yeah, Murktide is the premier threat. So that does adjust our sideboarding, but really speaking, we Historically speaking, um, there has been a misconception that we need to answer the threat of Delver. It's a little, I, I want, I like to take this opportunity to clear that up a little bit. Um, as a general rule of thumb, I build my cyborg without Delver in mind. What I mean by that is, um, I believe Delver is a type of deck that's very difficult to hate out. So I prefer to address the other problems first. And if there's obviously overlapping cards, that's convenient, right? Like. That would be the tiebreaker, for instance. But I think, for instance, it's easier to hate out um, like graveyard decks if I really wanted to. Uh, Endurance does a good job of that. And uh, when I feel like I can play three ley lines or whatnot. But um, I do that first. I, I like to play flexible cards like Thoughtseize that uh, cover a lot of range. Uh, especially now that the uh, undoing combo is finding its way to be pretty stock, I would say, in control shells outside of... Uh, Maybe Anorog uh, and Trunks. Uh, I forgot the numbers behind for Trunks, but yeah, Trunks and Anorog are the the two I would say that play more traditional control, where you just answer all the threats and then when we Uro, right? Like, like that's the new school, so to speak, control decks. But then um, what's more popular right now is the Jeskai like Hope Breacher Undoing combo because you give up a little bit maybe in the Delver matchup, but you have big game against combo, which the control decks have not had big gaming as combo, I would say, in at least a year or so, right? Or, or, or even longer. Um, ever since they've gone to these almost like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they've gone to these essentially uh, big haymakers and bombs that they want us to play uh, that are good in the fair matchups. Now, I think the list I'm playing today, like I said, I played this in the second league of last night and I. Essentially, would have 5-0'd by punted. Um, so in the first league, I lost to the a mulch deck because I misboarded. Um, no guarantee I would have won anyways. And the league might have just played out differently because you get different pairings based on your um, record. But uh, yesterday, um, I did lose to humans. Be uh, and I had essentially the game wrapped up and got a little bit careless. And uh, did not see a interaction that I... Did not realize the interaction I did not know... Uh, was not aware of interaction I, um, I hadn't seen before in the uh, Orzov Pontiff and uh, General Karudo, I think is, is the name, uh, the, the white black creature. But nonetheless, I didn't realize they can just target the hoof and then sack my, and then destroy my whole board. If I played it safe and got progenitus, I, I win easily. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I don't want to make excuses, just explaining. Uh, the, I did play this list yesterday, and you know, aside from that screw up, uh, the list felt very good. I will say though, the Delver matchup, um, because I know this could be of, in of interest to people, I did win my matches 2-1. So take that for what you will. It wasn't a blowout or anything, and it was definitely close, especially against uh, at least one very good Delver pilot. And then I did win 2-1, and what I had to do was keep in part of the natural order package. Uh, I only cut one after I cut Archon. Um, leaving in these finishers because I want to go a little lower to the ground. But I think it was fine. Like, I don't mind leaving in part of the natural order package. At the end of the day, what matters against Delver is still, um, one, you need to play tight. Like, I cannot stress how important this is. You can get away with being a little bit sloppy against control because they can't punish you as much. And then against combo, that's typically not what is determining who's winning or not. Um, in my experience against combo, it's the density of hate cards, or disruption, I should say, N not necessarily even hate, that matters. Um, you can probably, like I said, get a, li a little, get away with being a little bit sloppy there too and not get punished uh, too often. Against Delver, this is not the case because of Wasteland and because of Days. Um, so, I cannot stress how important it is to play clean. Uh, and if you are looking to improve on one thing, or and instead of trying to figure out, you know, what is the best 
list you can run. I would just focus on cleaning up the sequencing. Uh, number two, um, because they are a mana denial deck, you want to have the strongest mana base possible. Uh, this means 14 IMS, so initial mana sources, and four ones upon a time. Like th this, I just cannot stress how good this card is. Um, it is the most, in my opinion, broken cantrip since pr potentially Gataxian Pro. Like that is over a decade ago. Um, because it is free, and because in our deck, it is essentially a mini dig through time in the late game. Um, so yeah, enough about that. Uh, I will say if you want to have even stronger game against Delver, um, instead of even playing Baseju three copies, you can even go down to two or one or zero. I wouldn't recommend it because you lose a lot of power level. But if you know you're not going to need to Baseju, um, you know, a land flare or, or whatnot, um, you can play more fetches, and that will make an even stronger mana base. Hey, hey, Yogg, how's it going? Um, so that is my, 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 my second recommendation. You know, having the strong mana base of 4 Once Upon a Time, 4 IMS, and then, uh, you know, 20 to 21 lands total, depending on if you're under traditional or the, uh, the Reclaimer build. Reclaimer obviously having 21 because we have the Bog, um, which is not really a land, in my opinion. It's more like a spell. Um, and then 20 if you're on the nettle uh, traditional build. I would recommend having the much stronger mana base if you want to have better game against Delver. And let's just say you don't need to you know, worry about Mirror Lage or something. Then you can go down to two copies or whatnot. I think this card is very, very good and the strongest printing for elves since probably once upon a time. Um, and I'm okay personally with you know having to play very tight against Delver, but if you think you're gonna make mistakes, that would be one area where you can, you know, uh, make your deck better against Delver and, you know, take the hit elsewhere, so to speak. Uh, maybe playing fewer copies of Baseju. Um, and third, f and last but not, uh, the third thing I would recommend is 3-4 uh, Tribal, right? Like, four copies of Endurance, four copies of Reclaim. Those cards are a nightmare for Delver to deal with. Um, I'm not going to comment too much on Natural Order, you know, having it in or out, because I think ultimately... It doesn't really matter, like, because those three things supersede that, right? Like, um, I've done it both ways. Uh, if I had the preference, I would not board it in. But, you know, in this situation against Delver, I really only want to bring in three Endurances. And what that necessitates is boarding on the Collector Oof, one Natural Order, and one Archon. Uh, like I said, I do not think this really matters all that much in the grand scheme of things compared to, for instance, playing a very tight number one option. Uh, with that said, I'll go ahead and begin. Uh, like I said, I do think this list is very good. Uh, my gut so far is within a league, I can pretty much tell if something's good or not. Um, I think only very few times I've been on the fence about a card or, or an idea that I had. Usually it's obvious um, right away whether the card's good or bad. And uh, for instance, I played a league on Sunday with like Yorion. It was very obvious right away that that idea is terrible. Alright, so I think this person plays a lot of uh, Cephalid Breakfast. Unfortunately, not a very common matchup. I, I tend to not um, like playing against these uncommon matchups, but what can you do, right? Um, this is like borderline because the Once Upon a Time here is like a half mole. Uh, but if they are on breakfast, uh, the reclaimer is very good. Um, I think I'll probably keep, but I don't. I don't love it. Like, I might be wrong. This may be a goblin player too, so I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. Like this username looks familiar. I just don't remember what they're on. Looks like goblins. In which case, my mole just got a lot worse. But I think that's okay. Yeah, okay. I missed there. Actually, I screwed that up. I'm, I should have played the Reclaimer because I know I'm not, I'm not going to block. So, you know, very sloppy again to start off the night, unfortunately. Not to mention, I get punished by, well, I, w I would have been punished anyways if I played the Reclaimer, but uh, more punished here, right? 
it wouldn't have mattered because no matter what we do, uh, they were going to connect with the lackey regardless of our draw. Or, oh my god. Sure. So I think we're probably going to lose. We're like pretty far behind. Ancient Tomb is a new one though. Yikes, Jesus. They might just like empty the warrens us here, essentially. Yeah, I think they are. So, okay. Like I said, um, not sure it would matter here, but uh, we're taking a whole bunch. Luckily, I think we can potentially stabilize with this. But we need to hit a cradle here. No, that's not doing us any favors. So again, that is um, a little bit my fault, right? We are at a virtual seven at the moment, unfortunately. Oh, all right, we're just dead, I think. That is a, like a million damage. Ugh. Yeah, we are very dead. Um, the good thing is I don't think it would have really mattered given, given the hat. Uh, we would have been more in the game, but like, we're just so far behind, right? Um, but yeah, I, I, the good thing, like I said, is I don't, I think we, not 100% sure, but I think there's a likelihood we lose anyways, regardless. Um, so that feels good. I mean, speaking of the crop rotation, this is one of the matchups I was talking about where, uh, you just want something to board in because you want to board out the bog, right? Um, I like the Karakas here too, because, um, a Postulate Mons that we can bounce is pretty relevant, right? To set them back on mana. Um, there's like some merit for this, it's just like very high variance. I don't think I'm a fan of the Force of Vigors, only because I, I did run into this exact situation yesterday night, and that's why I wanted the, the crop rotation. Uh, notably here, uh, Force of Vigor not very, I'm not Force of Vigor, Assassin's Trophy not, also not very good, right? And we would actually rather prefer the crop rotation. Uh, I think everything aside, it's probably reasonable. Uh, argument to be made, we don't actually want the Griggs. I think that's accurate. Um, so it's between an Endurance or a Bog. Um, I honestly think just developing our lands is probably more relevant. Um, yeah. So potentially we'll want two crops or something, right? Like, I don't think leaving in Bog is like the worst. Like, I, I think because they are just trying to, um, what is the quote? They're just trying to, um, you know, deny man or win really quickly. I think this just being a land might be okay. Uh, another argument is for like a force of vigor in case to hit their vial, uh, and one is not too bad, right? Um, yeah, so th it's one of those two things, I think. Definitely don't want like multiple force of vigors stranded in my hand. Uh, probably, man, I'm like, can't, like, this is very good in the matchup, so I'm, let's try it. I normally don't like keeping five light hands, but with a natural order, I think it's more defensible. Also, our deck just tends to top deck very well, and the, the one card in addition to natural order is also very good for science, right? Like, this is a learning stream, right? It, we're here to uh, procrastinate um, for our finals, and then if we're not gonna, you know, study that way, at least we we study, um, you know, with regards to magic. Uh, for those who don't know, a Tarmogoyf is very good against Del um, goblins, historically speaking. Uh, 
but seiju is very absurd because the, the downside of a seiju is it doesn't produce um, other colors. That's not a problem when you're a mono green deck. <laughs> Fair enough, Josh. So I, I fetched main phase to play around removal, uh, for those of you who are curious. So welcome to the stream, uh, GDFGHD. I feel like that's an acronym for something, uh, but I, you know, may not be in the loop. That's pretty f crazy that somebody would be kicked out week one and is still there. The, the beauty of this configuration, when you have two fetch lands and reclaimer, is every permutation is available. Your opponent has to guess what you could possibly have. I feel like they have, well, it can't be a munitions expert. But we get the arbor here because if they don't kill it, they die. So we'll see. And then here we'll do this and that. So it's kind of funny that our opponent is playing uh, Ignoble Hierarch. Uh, I was just in the Goblins Discord today chatting, uh, you know, very casually with uh, one Goblin lackey, um, like Eli. Um, and Eli hates this card, so I'm kind of surprised that another Goblin player is trying it. Oh, well, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, they are, unfortunately. Uh, the good thing here is we do have a progenitus. Yes, it can block the lackey, so they can't. I mean, they want to, like, you know, get to present uh, Muxus, so be it. Seems like that's what's happening right here. Yeah. So they might just flood here. I don't think we're dead, and we killed them on the crackback. So there's that, right? Uh oh, unless there's something else I'm missing. Yikes, that is. I think we're just dead here, right? Actually, that's not true. We can chump the power driver. Wow, okay. On the arbor. 
That's kind of insane. I think we are just dead, Jesus Christ. That is definitely pretty good. Well, all right. Um, I don't know what to make of it, but it is what it is. We just uh, take those and move on, I guess. I don't know why I run into goblins so much uh, in leagues. I guess because being a tribal deck, you know, there's a you know big following. That must be it. Like. I think the same is, can be said about elves, and uh, nobody really likes merfolk from what I can tell. Um, I guess there's like the one merfolk person, but I think, yeah, goblins and elves tend to be very, uh, very uh, popular, I guess is probably the right word, among, especially amongst casuals. Um, like, I see it popular in EDH, for instance, but um, it is what it is. I don't think I... You know, win or lose, put too much weight into it because if you can dodge Eli uh, in a big event, then you're not going to run into that matchup. Um, I think this one is fine. Our opponent is 1 and 3. So, for whatever that's worth. Um, I'm almost scared when I, my opponent has a losing record, right? Because I'm probably going to play against something I don't want to play against. And this might be Reanimator. Yep. Yes. The, the, there are two signs of somebody who, who is playing nonsense. Uh, the first sign is if, you know, I happen to be streaming, I see the record is like 0-4 or something. Wow, what a, what a top deck though, right? Uh, the second sign... <laughs> the second sign is you know in the dark they don't know what I'm at what, what I'm on and they mold the four that, that is another sign of nonsense yeah this card is just really randomly good uh, the nice thing about this card that comes up a lot is main deck is if it's not good you, you get glimpse and it generates mana with the cradle which is pretty pretty nice Especially if you can pitch something like uh, an Archon or a, or a Hoof that you don't want to cast anyways. So if I'm them, you gotta go for it right here. But what a, wow, what an insane top deck. But um, Josh kind of, you know, said it right. Like, if you're playing against somebody who's 1-3, and three, odds are they're on some kind of nonsense. And while I think Reanimator is a real deck, uh, unfortunately, it's generally... A very popular deck amongst uh, newer players because it is like fairly straightforward to play. Playing around hate, admittedly, is more difficult, but at least game one is like fairly straightforward. And we just like luck sacked ourselves into this insane top deck. I'll call it how I see it, and we, you know, pretty much if this holds, have stolen game one with pure luck essentially. If it holds. Yeah, and, and even in um, paper, right, Josh? I think, like, obviously the cheapest deck is probably D&T because no reserve list cards. But I suspect it's probably um, one of the cheaper decks. That is, I would say, competitive. <coughs> in addition to being easy to play, right? Like, before, one of the better decks that um, was ch didn't have too many reserve list cards was Dredge. But I do not think that's a real deck anymore. At least by legacy standards, right? Obviously, we have them in soft lock now. Um, they can, you know, target our endurance for all we care. Um, that's probably not a winning line. In fact, I've never had, I've never lost a, a game where their first reanimation spell was on my endurance or one of my other creatures. That's not Archon.
And I've mentioned that actually on multiple streams where like I'm willing to put that win streak on the line, right? Like, I do not believe they, they can win that way. So their hellbent now um, should be pretty game over. Uh, Hokek is like around. I just I don't know how good it is because endurance is just a pain in the you know what for it, right? Like the printing of endurance has really short up um, the green matchups for Hogak and uh, any, any blue decks playing green for uh, endurance. So let's see. I think we want to definitely play the. I'll do it this way. So that that like gets our. Uh, I lose a point of damage by deck thin. I think that's worth the trade off. What I mean by that is I could have attacked with a reclaim, but I think it's probably fine not to. That's eight. Uh, yeah, I think that is reasonable, Josh. Um, what's it called? I actually made a mistake. Uh, I forgot I, we had already used the bog, and I was thinking about holding up reclaimer. And by the time I started my um actions, it was already too late. So I took the best uh route possible after ha having made the mistake of not playing the fetch, if that makes sense. Or after after already rotating. I could have technically still attacked for the, the Reclaimer, but yeah, I had a mental uh, lapse there in terms of not remembering um, that we already used the bog is essentially why. Otherwise, I would definitely agree the damage is definitely more important in case they have some kind of draw. Uh, given that they're hellbent there, I don't think it matters. But if they had like one card, for instance, they can go something like Looting into reanimate, right? That, and that could be re relevant. Um, here, I think we just want to board out the um, the grindier elements. It's funny too because Glimpse of Nature is now in the category of grindy elements instead of a combo piece. Um, would not have said that even like a few a year ago or so. Because it, endurance has completely changed the math on that. I think this is reasonable. Um, a question I get asked a lot is why don't I like the Collector Oof? The reason being is if it's relevant, that means the game has gone to a stage where we've like sort of stopped what our opponent is doing and would rather just win, right? Uh, I think we keep. But yeah, I, I agree, Josh, that uh, your line there is definitely the, the most optimal. I just rest for... Not, I don't think it really mattered because they're helping, but it could have if they weren't. Uh, another reason why this card is absurd is because of matches like this where uh, it's just like a random hate card. Like you have, you know, a pretty high chance of hitting Endurance or Reclaimer, right? Uh, here, I think we let that resolve. The reason being is they probably take the Thoughtseize, which means this is live. If, there's, if they can beat a Thoughtseize, then they take the ones, right? So we have essentially six draws to find uh, endurance.
Reclaimer is pretty good here too. Although not as good, obviously. There's the Endurance. And obviously I'm leaving the Green Sun for a Reclaimer. And then I'm gonna pitch the Once Upon a Time. Or actually more likely the Arbor because the Once can find another Endurance, right? This is what I mean by this card is like absurd. So the line here, if we don't draw something relevant, and that's not relevant, well, this, this sort of is, but not. The line here is we will um, try to put our opponent into the, try to go off now, because we're going to get a reclaim right. We have backup. Essentially, this is like getting your log piece down with force backup, uh, force being the endurance. Um, if they do not go off here, it's probably over. So they would have to seize our endurance and then go off. That's not easy to do with four cards. And especially since they had to leave with looting, it's even worse because if they leave with Thoughtseize, we can't stop them. If they leave with looting, we can still hit whatever they loot. And I think the game, as long as we can fade drawing the bog here, uh, we're in pretty good shape. That's, uh, that's probably one of the worst, or worser draws for us here, actually. It does mean we have lethal next turn, but that's not really what we're looking for. Like, we already have a win condition on board. Ooh. Um... I think here we once first for a land and then yeah, let's do it this way. So I sequenced it the way I did there because I wanted to leave a higher possibility of having the second force. Um, we could still obviously, um, you know, tutor for it via Reclaimer, but I'd rather not do it that way, um, is the reason. So we're going to play the land they know about, not to mention this is a potential spell. And then um, just pass the turn. This is annoying, but not the end of the world. And we do have the backup, I said, endurance that they actually know about. So they still have to play through that. The line here actually might... Actually, I would get the armor, but the, the moon um, blocks it very well. So I think the second force is probably is better. Um, and here, we're not going to kill... Well, the bog doesn't work, Josh. Um, 
So they, their line right now is they have to disarm our endurance and then uh, go off. The bog doesn't work, though. So I think here we just bash. Uh, and then we can play the Reclaimer. The Baseju is potentially relevant. Um, because if we draw a land, so I'll do that. Then, then we can activate Shepherd. Agreed, Josh. So, so Josh and I arrived at the same line, right? Like, you're weighing the options of whether this is going to hit Anime Dead in the future. Probably not. I just don't think they're beating the endurance. Like, given that the limited resources that they already have, right? Like, and we're just gonna swing out next turn. If we draw a land, it's just straight up lethal. Um, even if we don't, they don't. They go to one. I think it is probably just game because they only have one card left. They have to lead with Thoughtseize, right? Like, and I don't know why they pitched the unmask because they have to get this out of our hand. This is actually a stone rain too, right? Because that fetch land is now real bad. Sure. I do not think there's an owl for them. So, uh, suboptimal play from our opponent here. Uh, at, at some point, you need to disarm the endurance, but um, I think they have to learn that the hard way uh, in another league. Like they shut off the reclaimer, which is good, but you know, you didn't take out the the card that other the other card that mattered, right? So one and one. Um, the I updated uh, the stream decker by the way to include um, the list we're playing tonight. We did lose round one to goblins. I'm not really too concerned win or lose about that match because it's not what we um, prepare our deck for. Also, we just kind of got nut drawn, right? Like both games, especially the second game. Um, Okay, so my wife is telling me that I have a package outside at the door. I will go ahead and be right back in 20 seconds, or not even, maybe at 15 seconds just to uh, bring the package indoors. Still loading. Uh, I'll get water. All right, so kind of a long queue tonight. I wonder if that has anything to do with that the prelim is also going on right now. Um, possibly.
But in the meantime, I'll go ahead and bring back up the list. Uh, okay, spoke too soon. Actually, I will post my socials here again um, for those interested. Uh, it has everything ranging from Patreon to uh, YouTube to uh, Twitter and Discord. Uh, we're on the play. I wish we had a second land, but I think we have to keep. Because the hand's actually quite good if we hit a land. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so the videos I always post to, uh, you can find them on Twitch, but they're, they're only there for like a month or whatnot. Uh, I think the videos are probably the best way to learn. The Patreon I think is very useful too. And I also, for those of you who are curious, um, I went ahead and posted my latest uh, metagame update. And I posted a sample one from last month. So if you are interested in at least the metagame portion, if, even if you're not an elf player, uh, I think that would be uh, potentially something of you, of uh, interest for some. Oof. I don't really like this card. For some reason, the few times I paired it to Esper Sentinel, they're on the play, they lead turn one, and I draw once upon a time uh, as my first draw. And it feels really bad. So here, I think I'm going to lead with the Visionary first. And I think here also, I'm just gonna play out the Shepherd. They are uh, taxing us hard here. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Oh, I think they're on humans. Uh, we snap block this. All day, twice on Sunday. Uh, and that might have worked out. Uh, let me think. So here we have the Thali attacks uh, if we want. If we play the Glimpse, we don't really have anything to do with it, unfortunately. Uh, I think we still have to play and just kind of pass the turn. We do have a little bit of a sneaky, uh, you know, double reclaimer action going on here. That's kind of annoying, though. This is not a human. Uh, I think here, they had two ways to land up, so we can fog the first, but then we would be in trouble for the second one. Um, so not a huge fan of that. Yeah, actually, I'm okay, more, well, we'll see. Let's see what they do.
Yeah, I thought about that for sure. I think here we can. Yep. I think we better get plate safe and get the forest here. And we're definitely going to once in response because they can hit our arbor anyways. So we're going to have to once for land. That's not land, but that's not the worst. Sure. So the trade-off here was essentially, they traded two wastelands to hit one of our lands. Um, but we're a little bit manatized, and unfortunately, our, once upon a time, like, sort of missed. Not fully, though. Well, that, uh, changed things. So, I think here... Yeah, uh, we have a lot of options. Unfortunately, casting uh, Hoof for Lethal isn't one of them. We could... Cast Glimpse for two. And then play the Endurance. I don't love that, to be honest. But... And they go down to one land if they do that. So, I'm trying to think if we can do everything we want here. Uh, I don't think I want to put Wastelands back into their deck. So that's okay. Wait, oh, I, I see what happened. Uh, that's actually annoying now. I need to read what this card does. <laughs> So, had I known that, probably don't make that play. Uh, Hope wasn't lethal, though, is the problem. It wasn't like, even close to lethal. The 8 plus is like 16 or so damage. No, the, the correct play was just not to do anything. Because this flipping was the problem. So I might have just thrown doing that. <sighs> this, is, this is what I get for uh, underestimating my opponent. Like... 
I just did not really seriously think they could beat us. And now we are just going to get punished big time. Yeah, the, the play there was just to do nothing. And if we had done that, um, we probably already hooked our opponent on our turn, right? Like, we, I didn't realize the thing flipped is the problem. No, uh, Josh, we only had four mana. Um... Like, we had a Cradle, from what I remember. Because we... If I remember correctly, we... The, and then... I think this was tapped or something, I don't remember. But I could be wrong. I would have to look at it again. Uh, I, I felt like we only had 4 mana and we needed 5. Because of the Thalia. Because I think we played, I forgot what it was. Yeah, yeah, the Thali attack. So, so that's why I didn't do it. That, so the correct play there is that, so I end step endurance and then, um, what's it called? I, I should have end step endurance and then they can't really waste my uh, cradle because I have reclaimer up. And then I think here, do we just double block? Maybe. Oh yeah, for sure. I, that I, I that's actually correct. Uh, I spaced out. I usually am aware of that line, but that's that's correct. So we'll just do it this way. Yeah, we we punted for sure. Um, m multiple ways, right? We, I took the worst possible line. Uh, usually, I'm pretty cognizant about the evoke endurance line, and then I just like brain farted there. I don't know why this deck is so popular at the moment. I guess I do know why. Uh, my good friend Eddie uh, Zamora has been playing it, and then uh, I guess the, it's like the deck is like pretty linear in the sense that it's like fairly straightforward to play. It's like a normal aggro deck, so like that's appealing, I guess. And then I th I do think it has some very powerful draws, and just like and the games tend to be quick, so that would be the appeal. But. Um, Definitely a punt on my behalf. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll see if we can recover here, right? I, I don't think there's actually... I just... Okay, this thing again. I'm going to have to, like, train myself about this card because I just am never going to remember it. Yeah, I, I do not think I'm ever going to remember what, like th that this thing flipped multiple times. So the good thing here is I think we can still hopefully win, uh, you know, the post board games. Um... Yeah, they could have done that, and then we would have just rotated as well. So there's that, I guess. Ooh, the last card. Like, playing with uh, fire here. The, I think the one reason to do it main phase there is if they do waste, you can rotate in response. And this is this is a little bit better than the other line of uh, that I had in mind, which is just do it on their turn. Because that gives them the option of wasting us on our upkeep. So I, I do think your line, it's the kid, is the best. Because like I said, it plays around upkeep wasteland. Um, assuming both sides play correctly, right? 
Um, it's a tough ass uh, given you know my sloppiness right right now. These are the type of decks that could theoretically have a mind break trap, but I don't think we care at the moment. If they have it, they have it. I feel like they have it. Like they've been pausing. Yeah. Well. I think if I really wanted to play around the trap there, what I could do is sequence it so I go Reclaimer into the Visionary and then play the Shepherd third, and then they can trap that if they want. But that that is a little bit of a mana inefficient play because what ends up happening then is like, they don't have to play the Shepherd off the thing, but then it might... Yeah, it's 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 a little bit uh, dicey. I think it's probably correct to not to probably play around it there, given our hand. So another uh, slight punt on my behalf. The good thing is it will reward our opponent to continue to play this card, which is typically not good against us. So I, I like that aspect of it, of it at least. The second cradle is kind of bananas here. A visionary doesn't live, so I don't like that. Um, four, five, six. Yeah, I think I like the second cradle here. If they play Pontiff, that's fine. Like, we just, they kill one creature. Interesting that they don't, I guess there's that. I was going to say, interesting that they don't hold up uh, Wasteland, but... I think, given our hand, we kind of have to do it now. And then just like hold up blockers, essentially. Uh, is there a reason to attack? Probably not. Pretty annoying, actually. So they could theoretically hit us for a lot if they chose to. We're at minimum 13 right now with the flyer. Uh, and they have just the all removal hand, I guess. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. If they have a pump spell, we lose. Jesus. I think we play the percentages. Um, ho hopefully they don't, but if, if they do it, they do it. Like. Oh. <laughs> Alright, um... 
definitely punt it. Frustrating because I think this is a very good matchup. Um, and I completely threw the, the first game. The second game, I think... I'm trying to think if we could have done something differently. Um, and I don't know... Like, it was really awkward that they drew the, the Cathar, like, multiple copies. So we couldn't even chump. But it is what it is. We're getting, uh, we're losing to these tribal decks today, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the good thing is, like I said, I don't really put any weight into the, those matchups. I think when it matters, I, I'm not concerned. Like, I think I will play better uh, under uh, more high-stress environments, if that makes sense, in that matchup. Let's be lands, maybe? Okay, I maybe this is my last Tuesday trying to stream because um, when I try to stream when there's a prelim going on, we just run into these just non-standard decks, so to speak. That or stream the prelim. The issue with that I have with streaming the prelim is I hate downtime. And unlike a challenge or something, the EV for the, the prelim is just very low. I'm not going to fire off the glimpse here because there's no point. And then the burst right here actually netted us uh, extra draw by playing the Shepherd. Should be over. Um, I can't imagine that they can beat this board state. Then you wasteland here too. And even then, um, we could just get more cradles. So the mistake that they made, I guess maybe because they have removal, I typically get GTA against creature decks. All right, that's defended. We are also in the O2 bracket, so maybe that's why um, we're running into these kind of decks. Hmm. 
that is probably the one, if I can give out um, one piece of advice, that's probably something that's worth mentioning. Um, in a tournament for elves, it's pretty important to win your first round. Since we're on that topic. Uh, I, f I wonder if this is a chalice deck. It could be. Actually, probably not if they're running Saga. Uh, I think this is reasonable. Probably no bog, actually. I think I like the Shepherd better. Um, the Karankas, maybe not, actually. I think the Shepherd's probably just better. And obviously the Force of Vigor is just insane, probably, in this matchup. So hopefully by the time we get to the second league, um, we'll have some more normal matches, so to speak. Although it's on me though, um, the other game was the punt for sure because uh, what was I gonna say? I had two mistakes today already that were pretty big. Um, I shouldn't have walked into the mind bridge that I even called out, um, but the bigger mistake was the um, not not playing the endurance for the natural order. That, that's probably the biggest one. Uh, here, I think I want to hit land drop, so I'm actually not going to fetch first. And then I think we. I think we take the. I think we take the visionary. I've been meaning to uh, to jokingly tweet out. The best way to uh, get an advantage uh, for these big events is to throw in your leagues so that they think uh, they don't need as much hate against your deck. Although I don't think that's how it actually works, but something something interesting to think about, right? Like to uh, purposely misplay or, or make a match closer than it, it feels so that your opponent um, plays less hate in the, in the big events. This is some of the next level uh, theory crafting, right? Obviously not relevant here. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to play against this, but it just in general. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's okay. I don't, um, I think we still have a second league. I'm not too concerned about our matchups. Uh, I think win or lose, this, this is like irrelevant data right here, right? I'm just going to play just to go through the mechanics. Uh, I do think we definitely had two misplays here. Um, I think we probably lose to the Goblins player regardless. Um, but we put, we probably should beat the, the humans player. I think that's a very good matchup. We, we definitely threw game one and then game two, we had a small, I guess, misplay, you want to call it that.
So one nice thing about Baseju is it's really good against the random uh, cyber hate now, like Cannonist and um, Graph Digger's Cage, uh, without actually having to board out bad cards, like, bad bad cards in like Assassin's Trophy. So here I'm just gonna go for the kill, right? Like they could potentially have a source of power shares, but I think we're okay. It's a lot of damage. At least this league has been really quick, you know, O two two O O two two O. I'm not so concerned about the match one. The match three is bothering me a little bit because I think, like I said, I, I threw the first game. Uh, the second game, I had misplay too, but it wasn't nearly as egregious. Thank you for the follow, Olero. Uh, I feel like I've played this person before. I just don't remember what they're on. I think here we're gonna deck thin. The reason being is um, we don't really like any of these cards, uh, these lands, so we just want to hit, ideally hit, just hit more lands, but have it be of the uh, cradle variety. Thank you for the follow, uh, Zombie Leg. So again, uh, for those interested in my uh, various social media presence, and when I say very, uh, um, actually, uh, Yog, one second. I think he, we're, we know we're gonna ramp here. Um, I probably want the reclaimer then. So against humans, I actually think endurance is the best line. I, I mentioned it earlier, but the reason being is they can waste us in response. Um, but if they do that, what ends up happening is we get a um, we get a protector with reclaimer, and then um, kill them on the following turn. The issue with doing endurance on their turn is that they can just upkeep waste us. While that's still bad for them, that buys them another turn. I hadn't considered, I mean, you, yeah, I, I had not considered, um, what was I gonna say? Normally I'm good about the, the um, you know, evoke endurance lines. It just slipped my mind there. I typically will catch that and then I just missed it there because, you know, um, not as easy doing it while streaming. I think here, I'm like tempted to go, well, I'm tempted to go Shepherd into Reclaimer here, right? And then f they can choose what they want to kill. Ideally we draw a fetch, right? Yikes. I'm hoping they just, a lot of people would just blindly kill the Shepherd. I'm actually hoping that's what they do. I, I want the Reclaimer to live. This is a backbreaking draw though. Uh, Grixis, it looks like. I think it, we're gonna lose this game. Um, I think we need to hit a land here. Normally I would reclaim her, but we just have two uncastables in our hand, right? Like hitting land drops is super important for this deck, and I think we have we have to take the chance there, right? Maybe they'll just him up. That that's actually what I want to happen now. 
Uh, our opponent him us, and then uh, we start drawing cards with Visionary. That, that's probably ideal. Because we can't cast these anyways, right? They're thinking about forcing, which is smart. Uh, unfortunately, we are in pretty big trouble, I think. Thank you for the follow, uh, Tell Perry and Kabu. Yeah, if you've liked my um, stream so far, I... Ugh. Alright. If you like my stream so far, I um I would encourage you, encourage you to check out uh at least at my minimum the YouTube, right? That's free and uh I think probably worth it for uh anybody trying to learn the deck. Uh we we'll probably would be down one game here to Grixis. Uh which ironically last night I played against Grixis twice. Uh one was like 4C though. It would, but it, splashing for white as well. But um, I also lost game one because sometimes they just have Lily on the last veil and you just not prepare to beat that card game one, right? That said, I think post board, um, I was able to fight through multiple engineers and I think that's pretty common actually. So if we do lose game one, it's not the end of the world. Like, Progenitus is insane in this matchup. It's unfortunate that we just drew... This does happen, unfortunately. I'm, the games where you draw your natural targets, it's difficult to win, or can be. Unfortunately, there's no real remedy for it until they have like a green brainstorm or something. That would be pretty good. Wow, that is actually quite insane. Um, they haven't done anything, which makes me scared they have Hall Breacher. Um, another card that is like potentially okay is Gris. The the issue with Gris here though is um it's probably gonna die to that. I think this is one of the scenarios where. Let's see, two, three, four, five, six. I think we can get the Gris and Plus. Ugh, all right. Arguments we made you green sun for two there um, in case they have removal so They didn't play the removal uh, Some people like to sandbag I guess um, not the end of the world, but probably could have been better if I did that two four five six seven Eight so it's not lethal I'll pass turn I suspect they have hard cast force up. Actually, no, they used one already, so maybe not. Yeah, you green sun for two there. If they have removal in response, you um, you get the visionary, right? But if they don't have removal, you just get waterwood and then just bounce. So a little bit punished for not playing around removal there. In some ways it's okay because um, they use a the removal. Oh man, I feel like that's gotta be forced. Hopefully we have just a shepherd here and then we can force things through.
Maybe it's Snapcaster, a card that we cannot play around, unfortunately, anyways. Excuse me. Oh, shoot, I screwed up. All right, I forgot that other bog was already gone, but that's not good. At least we get a deck pin, but that's, yeah, not what we want. They most certainly have force, but we have to just jam. Removal, perhaps? That was a huge mistake by our opponent. They just threw this game. If they eat at us before the, the hoof resolves, they win. Or at least, not win, but they're alive. Wow. Interesting. Like, we should not have won that game. At least not on that turn, I should say. Um, in this matchup, I just want to essentially become a combo deck. So I board out my heritages because I don't want to be um, more weak to engineer. But at the same time, I'm boarding in C's because I just want to, like, Take your discard or take your engineer and kill you is, is the game plan. Uh, can I keep this hand? Better. I think here we just want to fetch um, to thin because we know we're going to ramp with the arbor anyways instead of saving the fetch lands for arbor. I don't say this often, but I'm going to pass up the Cradle for the Visionary. And the reason being is because we already have a lot of lands. And I'm definitely not green, not green sunning for the zero on turn one. Very rare, but it does happen where you don't take Cradle. This is like one of the times. Sure. I don't think we actually care about that. Yikes. Alright, um... We have a 3-2 in this league. Um, I think we're okay with that given that They're against two decks we don't really expect to play against in a bigger event. Uh, one of them was also on us. Although, to be fair, our opponent just like punted huge game one here against us.
Argument to be made there, I uh, green sum for two to play around the removal. But in this case, I value getting the um, the, the arbor out of the wooded foothills. I was supposed to bounce. Yikes. That's not what's supposed to happen. The good thing is, I don't think we're super punished because I'm probably just going to get a Gris here. This is my draw of force. Or looks like brainstorm maybe. Or fluster. Wow, okay. I think we plus here and then pass. So the good thing is us not bouncing the vision, I don't think it really changed anything. We just made it work for what we needed to do. So now we have a, a onboard threat that they have to deal with. Pretty tired from work. Wow, that's a very good draw. We don't want to play the cradle yet because um, that tells our opponent um, what we might have. It was a little awkward that we couldn't protect our Gris against the Bone Crusher, which is like randomly good here, right? Um, also, not get me a visionary that hurt. And we have a dead fetch, unfortunately, too.
Excuse me. Ooh, that's a uh, irrelevant draw, unfortunately. So we let the Grizz die. Unfortunately, we do not. Ha I think we might just be dead. I feel like they have force. All right, that's a start. Two, three, four, five, six. I mean, they 100% have the force. Like, what else are they thinking about here? Two edicts and a force. Sure. Gonna have to definitely get some water after this game or match. As I am pretty sleepy. So they can edict us here and then edict us again. I think we're pretty much dead. Yeah, so not bouncing there um, potentially costing us. I don't like keeping this hand, but I think it can be very good if they don't have a removal spell. That's actually what I want to see. I think ideally here we hit a land or cradle, ideally. That's not bad. Mm. 
they want to force that they can. Uh, what this does here is, if we draw a land, we have a progenitus. Because the Thoughtseize is going to force the natural order through. Maybe they just missed. Wow, that's so bad for our opponent. Um, all right, I guess we see what's up. Could be a force here. Engineer, all right. I think we have to take the engineer. I don't know why they didn't force that. Our opponent is playing uh, way too patiently, in my opinion. They should have forced, I think, the green sun for one. We really just want to hit a land drop here. That's not the best. So they played our set, we just attack it. Uh, so that does nothing. If they play a Bone Crusher, I also don't think we care. Actually, no. Well, actually, that's fine. I'm going to leave with a Glimpse, so that's okay. Wow, they are letting that resolve. Interesting. I think our opponent is too patient and it's going to cost him now. Because what's going to happen is we're going to draw into another Thoughtseize or another or a Shepherd, and then your, your force is eventually just going to be dead. Like, you had to have use it, in my opinion, a lot earlier. This is, like, starting to become an insurmountable... Unless you hit an Engineer, unfortunately, here, but, like, it could happen. Your Brainstorm would have to be really good. And even then, like, we just have, we've developed our mana now, we can probably just even beat a sweeper. Alright, so they can't sweep us this turn outside of something like, um, end of festivities. Yeah, our opponent is just way behind, right? Like, they should, they needed a force a long time ago. And if they did, we potentially stumble too, right? All right. Um, we went three and two. Uh, not great, but I think probably should have been four one. I don't think we're supposed to lose this matchup. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick break, like one minute, and then I'll be right back, and we'll start another league. I think the list is for whatever it's worth. Good.
All right, I am back. I think we're gonna run it back. Um, started to get find our, our uh, rhythm there uh, towards the end of that last the end of that league. So we'll run it back. I think not too concerned with our losses. Should take this turmeric pills to help with the uh, digestion. I'll bring up the list again. Oh, and I'll go over a few card choices. Um, the Caracas is essentially um, what I've realized recently that alongside the Basajus is very good against the Merit Lage decks. Um, maybe we'll run into uh, the matchup for it to matter. Our opponent was most recently on Ant, according to uh, MTG bot. Uh, this hand is not particularly good against Ant, but I don't think there's, man, um, I guess it depends if we assume they're on or not. It was three days ago. We can go to Reclaimer, but they can beat that. So I think actually it's fine. We'll keep. Maybe we'll just draw well. Oh my god, they're on Belcher. Wait, what? Oh, they're on Eldrazi, okay. Interesting. You have got to be kidding me. Turn to GTA. Um, I mean, we have to block. They, they kill our creatures anyways, right? What the heck is going on? We have to kill that. Um, I don't... Uh, there's a few ways to do this. Um, you can let them waste mana, but if we don't do it, we waste mana too. We, I don't think we have a choice really here. Uh, in case we draw something relevant, right? Like, we have to deal with this. Because if they top deck a soul land, we just lose. I wonder if Eldrazi is going to start playing like a basic land just because this exists. It's kind of funny. Hey Jason, what's up by the way? We went 3-2 in the first league. Um, probably should have been 4-1. Uh, but I th threw big time uh, in the humans matchup. I Like...
Yeah, my opponent just said, isn't waste a, a basic? I said, yes, it is, but it's not a basic land type. So here, unfortunately, we just pass. TKS. We'll probably have to draw pretty well now. What do they get? What do they exile? The hoof, sure. I personally, if I were them, would not have taken that card. Um, because if you get to a point where you can cast it, you probably won anyways. We are under some trouble though. Hmm. Sure. It's gotta be. Yep, that's not it. What we need. Whew. All right. Um. Our. We just got Eldrazi, so to speak. I'm. I think we can still probably win both post board games, but it just got a lot harder, right? Uh, let's see. Don't want that. I got I got one more that I need to board out. The Karak is probably not. I don't think we want any of the other stuff. The Gris is like pretty good against TKS, right? You get a card back immediately. Normally, Gris not good against these. Um, chalice matches, I think it is good here. Main deck GTA is kind of annoying though. I'd imagine um, they play maybe, if they're on it, they probably play like one or two copies then. I guess it's good against DNT at the moment and to a certain extent, elves too. Although I don't think elves is that popular in my opinion, or just from what I've seen. Um, I'd be curious what chat has uh, been do seeing in the leagues and whatnot, but I, I don't think it's that common. Uh, this is like not great, but I think you have to keep because of the natural order. And the shepherd is like really good here. For those of you joining us, uh, this list is unique in the sense that for the first time we are not playing uh, uh, any kind of black removal. So no Assassin's Trophy, no Abrupt Decay, no Fatal Push. Uh, and the goal is to have a better, uh, or be less reliant on Bayou. Sure, that's fine, I guess. I mentioned at the beginning of the chat, um, or the, the stream, I do not believe by, uh, trophy is necessary anymore because it's gotta be a TKS, right? They can tap that. Spyglass, sure. Um, because Boseju just does a lot of what we want a trophy to do. So I think we can play more Haymakers in the form of Force of Vigor, which is a better card than Trophy, aside from hitting creatures. Of course, it doesn't hit Murktide Regent, but I think we can still beat Delver without um, removal. I, 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 the, the Delver matchup has never really been about removal, in my opinion. What is this on? Shepard? Okay, that's like largely irrelevant. Uh, the the Delver matchup I mentioned before uh, is typically about one 
playing tight, uh, especially during the early turns. Like, that's a problem. We might, I think we're just dead. I don't think there's an out. The warping whales hurt us pre- oh jeez, that's dead. We are not beating that. Well, it is what it is. I gotta take a look again at my keep on the second game. Maybe I should not have kept. It's like you. I need this to result. The problem is I need this to live. Um, and they had the removal spell, or I think it was a wasteland, and then I just didn't die draw a second land for a while. Um, if this resolves, or I draw a land, I play the vision, and we're probably okay because. We had the natural order for for um, progenitus. It just didn't work out. Um, I think that's okay. So I was mentioning, yeah, I'll bring up the sideboard again. Uh, I should, I did start a little bit earlier today, so that's the nice thing. Uh, I am not convinced that we need assassin's trophy anymore, and the logic being is because I said. Again, against everything but Murktide region, you're probably, like, in most cases, Force of Vigor is probably just better. It doesn't hit a land, but Baseju does that already, so you really only want it to hit the, um... So, essentially, you, you can have it line up so that you use, you save the Baseju to hit the land, and the Force of Vigor can hit, hit everything else. Um, and it played out well yesterday, uh, in the, the two leagues that I, I, I tried it in. Uh, I went a combined... 8-2. Probably should have been 9-1, but like I said, I mentioned earlier, I threw the 5-0 uh, the in, the, in the second league. I'm playing against Eh. Uh, I think this person uh, is John Kasari. Unfortunately, this is pretty bad here. I forgot what they're on. I think they're on, like, wheels. So, mm, this might actually be okay if, they, if that's what they're on. Normally, I would mold this, but I think I had lost to them recently, and I think they're on wheels. Yeah, so that's confirmed. Spirit Guide. Oh, they're on belt. Oh, no. Oops. Oops, all spell. The good thing is, in this matchup, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, you have to have this single endurance. So we have like, I want to say 10, 9-ish percent to hit right here. Nope. I think, let's see, the Dread Return is there and then where's the Thassa's Oracle? Looks like it's in their hand. So they can Cabal Therapy themselves. Um, that's fine. The good thing is we have like a million cards to bring in in this matchup. It's 
It's almost as much as Reanimator, minus the Caracas, right? Uh, not that. Conveniently, the Basaju hits Layla of, uh, of Sanctity as well. Seems pretty good. I think they could be more into Leyline Sanctity, unfortunately. If that is the case, um, yeah. I think given this hand, we just do this. Hopefully they don't have the turn one kill. Um, the thing is, like, if we assume that they're gonna lay line saying this, we just mole. Jesus. To either mind break trap or lay line the void, but then they can counter by not keeping a lay line saying to hanging right. It's like tough, like I, it's like you, which level do I want to assume the opponent is on? And if I assume they're going to mold to Leyla and Sanctity, I mold to My Bird Trap or Leyla and the Void. So here... Where is the Dread Return? All right, it's there. Uh, I'll just concede. Maybe that is the correct thing until they adjust, right? Like, like they know we're gonna have endurance and, and bog and thoughtsies. So maybe the counterplay is just a mole. It's it's kind of tough to mole to. Um. Well, I guess what we can do is, we can mole to either Layla of uh. uh Mind Break Trap or uh, Leila, or it could be, I guess, a hand with um, Force of Vigor plus like Endurance and Thoughtseize or something like that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think, yeah, I think that this is the case that they just had it all, right? Um, unless we just are, are willing to mold to Force of Vigor, sorry, because Force of Vigor is not even good enough there because. Uh, unless it's Force of Vigor plus Endurance, because we can't cast the Thoughtsy because they're going off turn one, and it doesn't work if they have uh, for Reclaimer either. Um, I think I don't want to continue playing against uh, Dex in the O2 bracket, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, draw from this league and start a new one. Means more magic tonight, at least, for uh, the audience. All right, let's see if we can bounce back. We lost to Eldrazi, and then we lost to, oops. I think the oops hand there, we probably keep and then we just accept losing to um, a turn one Leyline Sanctity. Um, there's an argument to be made we, we should mull though, but because they assume we're just going to keep like Endurance or something. And until we adapt, it's like which level you want to assume your opponent is on, right? In terms of, um, w when I say level, I mean like which uh, line of thinking. Um, this is probably a mull.
So ninjas typically does not play wasteland. So we can go ahead and aggressively fetch for Bayou in case we draw the Gris later. Uh, I think here we take the Heritage and just slam it. So they probably have um, Yuriko here and then just put it off the Ornithopter. I found this deck to be inconsistent, but I don't know. We're like pretty behind though, um, unfortunately. Because they're going to draw two cards a turn. Granted, the cards that they draw are not very good. Um, so there's that. Like, I feel like a lot has to kind of go right. When they could just e be either playing Delver or playing Elves. It's like a hybrid of, of either, right? Of both. Because while you do draw cards, your cards are the card quality is kind of low. We have to get a little bit lucky here, but I, I think we're fairly behind, so we have to try to go tr go off a little bit at least. Looking at my cyborg map, uh, looking ahead. Looks like I board board in Thoughtseize. Uh, can't do anything there. They probably board in bringing Yuriko here. Jesus. One of those nights potentially for us. Probably dead here, but we'll see. I think the next card has to be a visionary, and somehow the glimpse has to resolve. 
despite them drawing up half the deck already. Two. Jesus. That is going to be a lot of damage. So we're taking a minimum. Oh my god. We should be dead, um, but it's kind of amusing, nevertheless. Going to my map. Yeah, the thoughts uses come in. I think the endurance is not good here. Either it's the collector oof or the bog. And then I think we can board out two heritage druids because uh, we know plague engineers coming in. This can probably be a progenitus too. So we are on the play now. Um, we have not done too hot tonight without with being on the draw. So potentially something to investigate. Although I'm not sure really. Like outside of that first league, I guess. Uh, against the oops, I don't think we could have done anything differently. I mean, there's an argument to be made. We like we we assume that they move to the ley line sanctity, but I don't know if that's like bad gameplay, so to speak, or bad assumption to make against the El Draw. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's anything we could have really done so far. It hasn't really been too many um, fair blues, so to speak. I don't, this is like sort of fair, but not really. The, the old ancestral recall.
I think we can just do it now at all. I don't think they can be race that. Their clock is not that fast. Like they can bash us for the Eureka here and then we can just leave things back and chump. And we, we have the Caracas too. So I, I think we should be in good shape. Argument to be made, we don't even reveal the Caracas, but I think I like to play it safe, just in case. Nice. That's a good draw. Uh, I don't think we care about those. Take the brainstorm. That just stays back. I think we run it back. I'm drinking too much water now. Uh, probably would need a quick restroom break after this match. Allow me to get a good stretch too. Probably have removal. I mean, basic swamp, do nothing on turn one it seems very uh, suspect. Trading removal spells so far. I think I'm okay with that. Hopefully they don't have the Eureka here. I feel like if they if they did, they would have played it differently. Yeah, that's actually great news for us. Ah oh, man, too many glimpses here. I think they're flooding out and we're having a different kind of problem. I think we need to develop our mana base, so we'll see what happens here. Thank you for the follow, uh, Freddy Crew. I 
awkward hand for sure. Uh, I wanted to go symbiote into visionary, but fortunately our plans got spo uh, foiled. Oh, now they have the the thing. Sure, they got a free and a draw. Our deck is just not cooperating right now. Thank you. I needed that pretty badly. Um, I don't think we can afford to get this removed, so we have to just play out uh, the symbiote and not get greedy. Actually, that was bad. They they tipped our hand by not attacking with the Ornithopter. We didn't even need a block. We just take the do damage and then um, have more mana. Essentially, I think I like I want to do it this way. Feels kind of like they have force, but if they don't. We just like win right now. Yeah, that's, that's game. I, think, I, I don't think our opponent played perfectly either. So, our bad draws didn't get punished. And here, um, we don't balance in my opinion we need the mana and if we draw natural order i mean um a fetch land or a creature we just it's lethal right not to mention i don't think they run it but there's like sudden edict too Hey, uh, Gray Fox Eight. Um, I do not. The the logic is uh, Arcana Artifact is very good in that matchup. It's it's pro it's almost a, a progenitus that can be answered by like bounce, but that's about it, right? I think here we block this. So they have force. They can potentially sneak through damage here uh, if we they get lucky. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful.
That was a t bait for force. Actually, cancel. Jesus, all right. Closer than I would like. Yeah, definitely a lot closer than I would like. All right, uh, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick break and I'll be back in a minute. And I'll leave my, what's going on? I'll leave my list up again. All right, um, given that we won our first match here in uh, the league, hopefully we'll get like, you know, we'll go play against the more normal um, decks. The other thing I wanted to mention is, I'll bring it up here. Um, where's my tweet?
So this tweet here, um, so I linked my old um, last month's uh, metagame update as an example, but the Patreon that I have also has this month. So if you like what you saw, hey, bro, Mario. Uh, from last month, you can actually access uh, what's it called it um, this month's uh, metagame. Um, I'm using I essentially use the same structure, uh, and as a spoiler, I talk about um, you know the success lands has had lately, and uh, notably how the different decks have been evolving. Um, with that in mind, and with other things in mind, um, and how if you're an elf player. Uh, how that affects you, but there's a pretty gen it's pretty generic in my opinion, um, in terms of like um, how much time do we have? Sixteen seconds. I'll talk a little bit about it later, but more or less, it's pretty generic enough that uh, I think regardless of what you play, you could benefit. Ramar, we got to do a stream again soon. Uh, I want to see you back on this deck. I, windswept he, these days tell me uh, okay I would not have guessed that I was going to say I would have guessed um, green white depths Another Teferi. Interesting. Prismatic ending? Yeah. Jeez, and they're gonna... Jesus Christ. Oh, I thought they were gonna... They sh oh, for a second I thought they were gonna play another Teferi bounce. That's still quite the turn. Our hand is just not cooperating right now. Jeez. Well, it's not even our hands not carbon. Their their hand has just been really good. If either of those reclaimers stick, this game is probably a different story. But now it doesn't look that good for us. <sighs> the problem is if we hook here, that doesn't do anything. This could very well be an arbor if they have a Birds of Paradise. Um, I do not think we want that to happen. I think what I'm going to do here is... Yeah, that's what I'm going to get. Like, if they have even 
any flash creature or whatnot, I get blown the you know what out. And I and given that they have a second to fairy anyways, probably not worth it. And the good thing is they used up two endings already. So what are the odds they're going to have a third? They probably have three to four in the deck. Um, they showed that they had a second to fairy. Let me see. When did they show that? I could have sworn I saw that earlier somehow. Maybe I did not. I thought I saw they showed the second safari. Yeah, you're probably right, uh, Langlands. I guess they did not. I thought they did, but maybe not. Oof, that's annoying. Okay, so we would have got blown out, right? If we attacked there. Yeah, I, for some reason, I thought they had another Teferi, but maybe not. The line here is, I'm going to plus into a natural order and hope Archon stabilizes. What in the... Oh... This, for those who don't know, is a combo card. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> nice. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, I think here... We'll play the single beside you, and then we'll pitch. Um, they're probably on like a learn or something. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Uh, I'm trying to think what we should be playing around. Probably swords is reasonable too. Um, this is this makes infinite mana. I, I there's a it's probably food chain that what they're on. Uh, let's just name instant though. It, it's the most safe. Like, the odds that they have ending but not swords is low. So, I don't think we have to hit the Leo right now and give them a draw. I, I agree. I think it's like probably food chain. And they're just playing a more controlled build. We, we do have the food chain answer in our hand, luckily. You, God. Oh my God. Well. That is 
aggravating. I thought that could happen. I just didn't think. I figured it wouldn't happen because the chances are low. But I knew that was a possibility. I just played the percentages. Maybe I feel like they probably do have swords, but I don't know. <sighs> if I hit it, they draw anyways, but the problem is... I don't think we can continue to allow this to just bleed us out that way. Oh, that's what they're doing. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like it. I would think... I would think being in the 1-0 bracket, we would not have to face against this, but I, I guess you never know. They just happen to have a million lands here, so this thing is actually quite good now. You could, um, I'm just debating whether it's worth it here, right? Like, because they draw another card. I, I guess it's better than nothing, but then I kind of want to just, oh, man, this is like a tough spot now, right? Because... They get another... Yeah, I probably have to take the Leo off at some point. So maybe now is the time. Their curve was quite good. They went dork into to fairy. They have a second Leo. Oh, Earl. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Elves is the best uh, Gris deck, Chilius. I agree.
I think we just have to kill this. It's already way too late, but we still have to take it off the board. Kind of brutal that they had the second Teferi um, to answer the Archon. Um, and given that they're on white, probably want to bring in Progenitus next game. But we're way behind. They haven't even used Force yet. Swift Configuration is a card I have been meaning to try in Elves. I do not actually think it's good, but it should be probably tried at least. Uh, I think we just concede, to be honest. We're way... Agreed. I, in the interest of chat, I mean, me, un, me, unbanned mental misstep brought it up, so I'll just concede. We're just way too far behind, right? I think they have a million legends, so Caracas is going to be really good here. Uh, I don't think we should respect their combo plan. Uh, I don't think it's consistent at all. Um, I, they just curved out, and unfortunately, uh, and sometimes that happens. I think we are favored in this matchup, though. Uh, we just didn't get lucky there. I, I treat this as a co control matchup, essentially. And we we got tempoed out game one with their birds into Teferi bounce our thing and then ending, ending, and we just never really recovered from that. Not to mention they had a payoff too. So if they don't pressure us, maybe we recover, but we had to use our removal on the... Um, on the... Uh, that legend, I forgot. The the, the green-blue legend, partner legend. That, that card is a, um, a combo piece. And I know because of EDH. My, uh, one of my good friends played that uh, as one of their partner legends. I wonder why my opponent drew seven cards. Or eight cards. Interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, technically, we could have played it out, but I'm pretty sure we're dead. I don't think Force the Vigor is the way to play this matchup. It's just like very narrow. And we're down a card, right? Sure. Also casually having Basage is like just the nuts, right? Not, not even in opening hand, but just in general, I mean. So here, we're just gonna try to go turn three Gris. Um, hopefully we get there with the land drop. They mode a 5, which helps. Hull Breacher. Uh, alright, cool. I think we take the Hull Breacher. I don't think we actually care about the Force. Force of Will secretly, even prior to Shepard, not very good against us. 
because you can just grind them out, right? Like, they're down a card at the expense of tempo, right? Also, welcome back, Mike. Hopefully, uh, you've been doing well. It's funny because I kind of wanted to play against Lands tonight just to test the matchup, and we have not been pairing to Lands. Like, ever since I, you know, tweeted out a week ago that uh, I want to test the matchup with a new configuration, but it just hasn't lined up. I think we won our first match. Uh, oh yeah, we did. Dude. Uh, more important than anything else here, we have to hit a land. So I want to maximize by drawing the visionary. That is good. We we don't want to attack in case they have a uh, containment freeze or like some some random thing. Like the damage is not worth it. Could be Earl here. I suspect it is. So what we could do here is force the glimpse through. Um, by playing the Shepherd first. Uh, I actually think that's safer here. Because I think we, we absolutely need to um, get at least a few cards off the Glimpse. That helps too. Not to mention, um, if they force for negative value here, uh, or, or they could have forced for positive value just to get their Uro escaped. So I think we want to avoid that. And then we just bog them here. Um, yeah, I think we still bounce just in case. Um, they have that. They don't have the force. I don't. Do we even care? I don't think we do. Oh, shoot. I'm supposed to bog. Oh, actually, that's fine. That was a mistake by me. Yikes. Not a big deal, I think.
Jeez. All right. Um, I guess I'll take the fetch. Major whiff there. And there. Jesus. They're essentially playing a three card combo. Yeah, Ice Fang is like horrendous here, right? They can't even. Oh, they should have. <laughs> yeah, so the line here was I'm going to take their force because we know they have Swiss configuration and then hook them. So they won game one off the back of their Teferi and Curve. Uh, and this game, they drew their bad cards, right? Like, they're trying to make their combo work and I just don't think the combo is very good. It's like easily broken up. So ideally here, we're gonna go turn one seize, turn one, probably seize again. And this is like advantageous because they're on, on more five already. So essentially you just pick a part of their hand. We know they have Hall Breacher, so that, ooh, triple thought seize hand. Not really what we want to be honest, but probably not the worst in this situation. Hmm. I mean, do we even care? Like, we probably take the swift configuration because we don't. Well, we can lead it differently. I think we take the ponder. So they can't hit more land drops, right? care about the force. Uh, I think here we take the en engineer. Well, do we even care? Actually, no, we take the swift configuration and then we play our land. Sure. 
This is almost sad to watch. All right, so they are getting closer. Actually, That's probably just game now. Um, cancel. We don't have Heritage Druid, so that sucks. Leave sideboard. We can get a symbiote. Actually, I want to do it this way. We can get a Birch Lore. It essentially recoups mana by itself. Um, and we're gonna eventually just cast the Gris. That's probably game. I'm just showboating now, I, I guess. Yeah. A little bit sloppy on the sequencing there. Um, obviously, to clean it up, I'd probably just go a little slower and then just like think about what they could have. The line there is I'm going to grist their arbor so they just cannot play magic. Engineer is no good if you can't cast it. Although, to be fair, our, our board there probably beats Engineer regardless. Like, uh, we didn't really have that many X1s. Or, we didn't have any elf X1s, I should say. And, if we see that they're not low on, on lands, um, we probably don't get two arbors too, right? What does that say here? Oh, hey, High Star. Yeah, so... Nice 2-0 right now to start the league. The, what I've realized is these leagues, especially, you have to start one, uh, win the first match. Otherwise, you get paired against like the random stuff. And this is not good for practice, right? <laughs> Thank you for the follow, WCH0034. Yeah, I just updated the Stream Decker bot too. So um, what you see there is what I'm playing uh, tonight. I think the list is good. Uh, we got a little bit. Uh, well, part of the f one match of the first league was on me, um, but in general, I think we got a little bit lucky. Unlucky the second league. Um, this one here, probably a keep to be honest. Uri Cats is probably random. I don't know. But nevertheless, uh, like if need be, just use it as the lotus petal. So they are on reanimator. Oh, looks like it's Hogak. Interesting. Um, I think here it's gonna reclaimer is gonna be too slow. Um, so I'm just gonna go for the combo line. 
if I were if I were on the play, I'd probably leave with a reclaimer. But I I suspect they're just gonna get Hogak in play here. Not to mention we if we don't hit a land, we can't even bog. I think here we're going to have to glimpse and hope to get lucky. Wow, they didn't hit their blood gas. I think if your opponent saw Besage you Arbor, you probably think Elves and maybe Glimpse is a reasonable name. Natural is obviously a fine name too. Um, especially if you see Hello Newton, that's the other thing. Um, if you think your depths like another like again crop rotation is like reasonable, yeah. So they need crop rotation. So I don't. If you're still on um, Jason, does depths play Besage you at the moment? Like one maybe, right? Only because that's a double color deck. I realize like it's essentially the mono color decks that can probably play multiple copies. Lands being kind of the exception because they play like thirty five lands or whatever it is. Kind of sup well, I guess they can't pitch, right? Like I'm, I was gonna say I'm so kind of surprised they didn't pitch uh, their crab to therapy, but maybe the logic is they probably can't win if that's the case. I think here I want to play the druid because that's what I don't want in the therapy. Actually, cancel. So they name Natural Order, which is reasonable. So they have a Hogak now. Ugh. Looks like they're gonna make an extra zombie token by casting with the bridge there. Which is reasonable, I guess. The crab doing some serious grinding for them there. Eight, I gotta be careful I don't just die here. 10, 14. Oh, that's pretty, pretty good. I'll just pass.
We're not gonna bog, so I think it's fine. They probably swing out. So that's ten. We'll be at exactly one. If my math is correct, ten plus eight. Sure, no blocks. All right, pretty uh, straightforward enough. We just live until we don't, right? So to speak, ley line's pretty good here. Oh, Caracas is insane here. Uh, I don't think we want Force of Vigor. Well, actually, let me see. Hogak, I, I think I have it potentially in. I definitely want the Endurance and the Crops. And I feel like Force is probably not a winning line, if that makes sense. So I, I think I want to omit it. Um, according to this, I bring it in, but I don't, I feel like that can't be right. And given how much we actually have to bring in already, uh, I don't think we want it. So I, I'm gonna override myself here, so to speak. Uh, also my old boarding map I'm looking at doesn't account for the fact that we don't have trophies here and we actually have the freed up sideboard slots. Uh, you think Mimer Trap's decent here? I feel like it's not, but maybe you could be right. Uh, unbanned, mental misstep. Um, here, I think it's quite slow on the mole. Uh, this is significantly better. Keep. And I think the Druid here is the worst card. They might just codename Reclaim Our Endurance, is my guess. Reclaim Our yeah. So 50 50, right? And then, ugh, that's kind of funny actually. I think, given that they didn't do anything here, I, I do want to get the Reclaimer down. And then we have endurance backup, so that's kind of neat. Okay, yeah, that's really unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate sequence events for our opponent there. I I don't know their. I don't want to speculate on their hand, but I probably named reclaimer too. If from their perspective, it makes a lot of sense, um, especially if they kept a slower hand. Never let uh, people think this deck can uh, turn one you, right? We just turn one our opponent. But yeah, uh, you know, a one drop that gets the best card in your deck uh, that's randomly, you know, combo hate, just kind of absurd, right? Elder Reclaimer. Gets the best card in your deck, Guy's Cradle. 
Uh, we are playing against Viverus. So they should be on TS. Uh, we cannot keep this hand. Um, I've, I have played against Viverus um, a few times, Alex McKinley, uh, when they were playing, like, I think, Delver and I forget what else. But I suspect TES, given that, um, especially Brian Cook, uh, I think, top aided uh, one of the recent challenges. So, more again. Um, probably as good as it's going to get, I think, game one. Um, the reason why I mold this first hand is because I would mold that against anybody. Like, you cannot keep a hand with three glimpses. And then you, I just, you just keep a generically good hand in case he's on something else. Um, if he is on TES and you know that, to be honest, the game one is so bad that it's probably not going to matter. The most relevant card here is the Buseju. Actually... Oh, that, I screwed that up. I sh Yeah, I screwed that up. I should have taken a, a creature... Well, actually, that's not true. I should have taken the creature so I can green sun for two on... on on turn two, so that was a, a, a screw up by me. Yeah, I, I screwed that up. Oh man, that is really bad now. Yeah, I, I punted this game. I like tunnel vision for some reason into the uh, Baseju, um, but yeah. Maybe it doesn't matter. That would make me feel better, but... Definitely screwed that up. Oh, that's on me, chat. Uh, I kept thinking about the turn two glimpse line, and then the once upon a time like changed the math because I saw the Baseju. But I really should have thought about turn two um, green sun. Most of the time, you were, you're not going to get a turn two on the draw. I think we were on the draw. But it just so happened that we did there, and I punted pretty hard. The good thing, though, is I this is like one matchup I wanted to test. So in most cases, we would be down a game. Uh, so at least that part is realistic. Yeah. 
that that one is on me. Uh, this is fine. That one is on me. I think what we do here is we buy you into C's and then next turn we slam down Reclaimer and then hopefully we draw well. We can natural order or green sun the, like in turns to be. But definitely, definitely on me that, that game. A bunch of mana and no action. Take the ponder. Well, that is interesting. I feel like we slam it down here. They have a land, um, otherwise they can just go off, right? So like, I think you play it safe. I think we keep the visionary for action. Uh, I don't have any better cards, Mike. That's the thing. I like I, I hear that argument. It's just the problem. Is I don't. There's nothing better. Argument to me. I guess we can just keep in like another uh, symbiote or something. Four, we're still short though. Um, wait a minute. Seven, twelve, fourteen. They're at one. I think here we just put them at one. Actually, oh shoot, I screwed that up. But they might have just conceded. So 12, 14, yeah. Yeah, I miscounted, but I, I get, so he, he punted one back. Off the I punted. Yeah, Archon on, on instant is like really good given the oof is out there. But um, I, I just like miscounted for some reason. Uh, okay, so any creature you think is better, oops, too late. I, I guess we can add back third visionary, right? Or we can add back some of the glimpses to be fair. Uh, this is not going to cut it. Actually, I'll defer to Mike on this. Is this a hand that you would keep against TES? A Force of Vigor hand? Probably not, right? Uh, 
I think we have four thought seizes and we have I think it's probably fine. And then we put the land back. This elves does draw top deck very well. It's just it doesn't like to mulligan. And I think I mentioned that a few times. So we're on the same page. Like, it's, this is not nothing, I guess. We threw hard game one, though, but... And actually, on, on, in all honesty, we actually threw last game, too. We should not have gone the... We should have got the Archon, I just I miscounted for some reason. And But even if I didn't, putting the 1 is not on, better than Archon on instant. I, I usually just tunnel vision, because it, it's been a while since I played against TS, into Archon on Sorcery, because they had not played um, re Bounce Spells for a while. But maybe that changes now, right? Discard would be nice here. Let's not discard. I think here the one damage is probably not worth it. So I'm just gonna like dig, go deeper. Grid is quite interesting. Um, argument to be made here, I don't bounce. Yeah. I think the oof on instant is better. Yeah, for sure. We knew about Decay, yeah, we did. Wow, that's a hell of a draw. Mana and a Wish Claw, so that answers our question. And then bash. Thank you for the follow, um, Dominic or Dom. I don't know. I don't know which one you prefer. I think here we have so many live top decks. That's and unfortunately we just like completely whiffed. What is their hand? They can chain a vapor their grid, I guess, if that's what matters. I think we hard cast the given we have the second one. And then we bash probably.
That's good. I'm going to sequence correctly here and do that. I think this is, yeah, the last turn for uh, Alex. Oh, we punted game one, but we got away with it game two. And then we play better game three. Um, I think there is some merit to what Mike is saying about not bringing the ley line, given that we have the Force of Eagers now. So very reasonable take. And we just keep in potentially the glimpses. Because I think if we had the glimpses, it's, it's highly possible we win a lot earlier. Um, so that is a thing. Um, one more to go. Uh, maybe we can get the 5-0, right? I will say the deck bailed me out uh, here. I did not play the best against Alex right now. So I think definitely Mike, given that Mike plays a lot of Storm, Doomsday, and uh, Ant variants. Uh, I don't know if Mike plays TES, but um, I can definitely see now, based on how we map there with the extra slots, not, um, what's it called, not keeping in the ley line. Because the way we just mapped there, let's just go back to the deck. We brought in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards. And we're definitely cutting one, two, three, four. And then I can see going down to like one symbiote, one visionary, and just keeping the glimpses. Um, it's a little bit more awkward for sequencing though. Oh my god, we're playing against the Oops player. Um, they are usually on like burn or oops. So if it's oops, we're probably just dead anyways. Um, I don't think we can keep this against burn. Um, so mullion. And I think this is probably the best we can hope for. Um, uh, and probably put back the arbor. Looks like they're on burn. Like I said, if they're on oops, we're gonna lose anyways. At least game one, I should say. <sighs> Sucks to draw that. I think we do this though. Um, the symbiote feels good here, given that we have the visionary. Yeah, so, I don't know their first name, but, um, this opponent I know, like, top 8 it was Zoo before. But they are often on, bur on oops, though. So, but, again, if they're on oops, I just accept I'm gonna lose game 1. They're on like land, the landfall deck um, with, I forgot what they play, but quite interesting for sure. The list that was um, interesting. Okay. The list that was posted on, by MTG bot does not have reclaimer, so it's a different deck.
I am happy to see Thalia. That's my girl. We might be okay here. Um, wow, that's an, actually an insane draw. Well, sort of. Only if we hit here. Sort of a hit. Oh, actually, f fail. This is a fail. Dahlia, Dahlia doing her job here. I can see a wasteland probably just hitting this right now. Um, if they have wasteland here, we're still okay because... Sure. Um, probably just that. Because we still have the Heritage Druid. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of... A, that's why I said this is kind of an insane draw when we hit the, um, the Heritage Druid. I think they're trying to get us with, like, combat tricks. Not being able to cast the Once Upon a Time there was quite annoying though. That, speaking of combat tricks. I think we want to play this and just pass. Endurance is, yeah, a very gross card. And then we, we, we set the Reclaimer too. That, this is just disgusting. L's with Instant speed tricks, Jesus Christ. Ooh, all right. Um, I think the line here is to draw some more. I'm not actually paid two, just in case they have removal. There's a hoof. I don't think I want it though, is the thing. I, th I think I rat, cause we're not gonna hard cast it like easily. There well, like, we could, but we like, we tap everything out. Uh, actually that's probably okay. I don't love it though. Uh, I think I just pass, to be honest. What is gonna happen here?
The problem is the board is fogged up. Mm, sure. I think we are like significantly ahead now. Like endurance is ho holding back all of their creatures right now. It's a it's actually really gross. Uh, I th think we just play out the birch lore here. I don't think there's a reason not to. Like so something that could be scary is like something like price of progress or whatnot, but I think being at 12, we're probably okay. And then I think they're going to concede here because they see we can cast it. Uh, I think progenitus is probably the way here. Um, did we see that they had green sun? Probably not, right? In the Thalia. I mean, they could be Maverick, but what do we see? Definitely want the crop. I don't think we want the Endurance, even though it was actually quite good here. Maybe we do, I don't know. No oof though, for sure. I don't think a Bog either. I mean, in the case they have Galactic, or just Wasteland, I think Karakas is okay. These are the matches that I was talking about where we don't really have much. To bring in. Uh, maybe we just keep the one endurance. I mean, they, they could, I guess, have punishing fire. But I think this is probably reasonable. We'll see if we can close out the 5-0. Sure. So they are legit zoo with Wild Nakano. And they do have Punishing Fire as we thought they might. So I think that might change our sideboarding plan. There is a chance that we want um, more endurances to block the Nakato. The glimpses are notably not that great here. That's annoying. I think the line here is we're just going to want to kill the Eidolon with the Maseju. They probably have removal, so... Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to natural order next turn. How's it going, Francisco? We are uh, trying to get there on the 5-0 right now. We are 4-0 and playing against Zoo. I don't know what's going on here, but we'll take it. Please do not respond. Thank you. All right. We got our big boy progenitus. Yeah, this we're playing against that person. Uh, they're on a slightly different list today, but but yeah. I think the line here is just to not. Well, we could take two and then. Force them to have a blocker, so we'll do that. Yeah. Woo! So I know Francisco has been playing this cool, uh, I think I saw, what was it, Grixis Death Shadow? I, I, I know you posted you were 5 old recently, uh, Francisco with a list in modern. But yeah, it feels good to 5-0 with this uh, list that I theory crafted yesterday. Yeah. And I was like, man, this list is real good. So I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna show you the list. Uh, for those who don't know, um, Francisco is the equivalent or, or so of me in modern in that we are probably the biggest Elvish Reclaimer um, stands out there. And uh, I had the crazy idea yes or two days ago, really. What if we cut removal completely and just have a cleaner mana base? Well, not mana base, but cleaner um, play pattern uh, for us in that we don't have to fetch out Bayou. And man, the list felt pretty good today. Uh, we started off sloppy and that was my own fault. But yeah, Reclaimer is love and Reclaimer is life. And uh, for those who don't know, in Legacy, at least, Reclaimer gets the best card in your deck and po quite possibly the most powerful card in Legacy, and that's Guy's Cradle. And even when you are top decking, Reclaimer is a Tarmogoyf. So, a one mana Tarmogoyf that's bigger than Wanakar, right? Like, this card just has too much text, in my opinion. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for me and Francisco, it is the most fun card, I think. I've had playing for the lap in Magic the last few years. Um, I played Green White Reclaimer in um, Modern, like Francisco, who was the inventor of that deck, and it is just pro probably my favorite creature of all time. And no surprise, um, Francisco, it's his second favorite creature behind Prime Time. Which is definitely up there, you know, it is in the Mount Rushmore of green creatures. Uh, anybody who likes lands and likes tutoring, uh, it, it doesn't get any better than, or typically primetime does it the best, right? Like six mana or seven mana green sun, or six with summoner's pack, right? Primetime, put in whatever land. Royal Assassin favorite creature. Um, but for those of you who are tuning in right now, we just got the 5-0. I'll go back to the matches real quick. Uh, we be, what was this right here? I don't even remember. Right, let's take a look. I feel like we play kind of unlucky. We got a little bit unlucky here. I think they might have been Grixis. So we mold and, oh, they were all ninjas. Okay. So we lost the ninjas round one. Oh, we beat ninjas um, after dropping game one. Uh, we be, what was, what was this player on? Oh, this was close, I believe. I, I, what were they on? 
Oh, there's a Swift configuration there. The legacy, I thought, no, I didn't, Francisco. I'll, I'll bring up the, actually, I'll bring it up right now since uh, we have chat. I, I like Francisco's um, tweets because they're always bruised, right? Like, and I think it's cool that he's experimenting with. So let me bring it up. Okay, so I think it is this one. Uh, Francisco, let me know if this is correct. This is what you put here. So, this is what Francisco um, 5 0 with. There is a similar list that was played by Danny Ground with four. Um, he did uh, Sugu uh, as well. And I think it's actually similar to this list. Um, but I think that list from Danny Ground, let me put it side by side. So this is the other list, and that one played a hull breacher, but I think this is probably a lot smoother because you're not running the clunky, um, you know, days and doing combo. Uh, this is more like your your traditional Grixis control list, and so it has Jace as the finisher instead of the combo. I honestly think the combo is. Yeah, yeah, Brian Koval played, I think. A lot of people have been trying this Grixis list. Um, some people think it's good, some people not so much. I personally think this card is really good, especially against, um, you know, Elves. It's winnable because you have Thoughtseize, but you're probably not favored game one if they know you're on Elves. Uh, sudden Edict for sure, you know, killing Murktai Regents and, and the like. Um, not being counterable. Good against uh, Merit Lage, potentially, um, depending on what's called, how they uh, go about it. But definitely, definitely, um, I, this has been on my short list actually of decks to try. And I wish I could build this deck. Actually, I have most of the cards. Maybe I'll just build it on paper. I, I love myself some Grixis Control because uh, I, know, I know this is gonna tell some people, him is one of my favorite cards to play. Definitely not play against, but to play. And uh, yeah, so there's basically no Veil of Summers outside of like TES at the moment. So him is quite good again. And obviously you get to play um, Discard, which is good against uh, Combo, right? Yeah, so there's there's hardly any um, Veil of Summers. So I think him is actually pretty good. The format is like not super fast. Uh, I Let me go to... Actually, okay, since we have special guest Francisco here on, I'm going to go ahead and actually just bring up my... Um, metagame update that I had worked on. This is on my Patreon that normally you have to subscribe to have access to. I'll just like give at least minimum a, a sneak peek. So, oops, this is the wrong one. This is last month. So on my Twitter account, uh, I've had the new month and the old month. The old month is on Google Docs and you can just like access for free. Let me bring the new one. So wrong one. Here is the new one. Why does it say that? Uh, yeah, this is the... Well, actually, is this the new one? Yeah, this is the new one. It's just dated wrong. I don't, they need to fix this, but... Yeah, as of March 15th, um, these are the decks that are the most popular on Moto. And I, what I do on my uh, metagame update is I talk about the new developments. So for Delver, nothing really big since, because uh, last month I go over the um, Ragavan ban. I know that's like a tongue twister to say. Uh, but I think Mystic Sanctuary is kind of the big thing to watch out for now, for instance, out of Delver. I, I'm going to use one that's more interesting, which is the 8-cast. So Atawara... The, the land is kind of a new tech from 8cast that I didn't really see coming. A lot of people predicted the Kappa Cannoneer, so I didn't mention it here in my, um, you know, new developments, right? Because it's it was kind of foreseen from the spoilers. Um, and we talked about it actually in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, metagame update. But I go, I talk about it's not only what is changing. So if you're interested for a quick recap, you know, $5 a month subscription. Um, you can quickly get a 
overview from me what's changed. And then lands, for instance, I talk about the eight mulch variants that are like pretty popular and lands being good. And then, um, you know, this land in particular, answering Collector Oof and uh, at least out of Elves, Arcana Valor's Reach, among other hate bears. Um, okay, so I think those eight mulch versions, in my opinion, having played against it, they're really powerful, but they're kind of susceptible to hate. So what I mean by that is, like, I played a match against it yesterday, and one Force of Vigor on their uh, mana bond, and their deck just did not feel like it was doing anything. So, felt a little bit glass cannon uh, to me from that perspective, but to be fair, Force of Vigor is a, a card that only really green decks can play, and then it does grind pretty well with Saga. So, I would have to play with it, I think, with a blue deck to see how those feel, but... It, it's like very all in, in my opinion. Um, it does grind with loam, but I think the, I think the traditional lands build is more um, stable. If that makes sense, it's it's very all in, um, and you know if if you if you have the combo so to speak, which is just like exploration or mana bond with um, one of the eight mulches, then you're probably good to go. But I think it's more easily hated out, is my opinion, based on. The, the very low, low sample size playing against it. Also, the very biased sense, uh, standpoint of playing against with Elves, which um, would rather see that version than, you know, a, a five, five Tabernacles, right? So there, there is that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go back real quick to, uh, to Francisco. But this looks pretty sweet. Like, very standard, built in the traditional Greeks' control um, structure structure so not trying to you know get cute with the days on doing combo and I honestly think you probably don't need it because you have uh you know consumes all which is just an absurd card especially against the the kappa decks um so yeah how do you, it seems like let's see let's take a look at it. the one of pyroblast I, I believe that's sick yeah um you're talking about the creature right francisco i'm assuming and would you change anything about this list, uh, Francisco, given um, your five matches? Uh, I mean, obviously the um, mana base uh, is probably, I would be curious about, like, how did you feel about the mana base, the, sp specifically the mountain? Um, also, okay, sure. So Francisco saying the list felt good. So when it comes to lists, I trust Francisco, so, you know, Definitely five on the first try, right? like they say. Um, three surgicals is interesting. I suspect it's. Did you like the surgicals over maybe something like Leyline, uh, Francisco? Yeah, the mountain. I make that makes sense. Like having a fetchable red source because you have um, you know four blasts and a blood moon, so that that makes a lot of sense. And then yeah, the fourth uh, consumes on the sideboard. But yeah, this card has been. Um, I'm gonna bring back uh, Moto here for a second. I'm gonna go back. So Danny Ground, who was the previous trophy leader, hasn't played in a while, I think. Um, they got a lot of their five O's playing not the same list as Francisco, but um, a similar one with the small days and doing package. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about that. It seems a little clunky. Uh, if you're only gonna run the one, uh, or they might have been running two. Let me see. Here we go, Danny Ground. So Days Undoing, two copies with three Narsets and the Hull Breacher. So I guess fairly, fairly consistent. Um, just a little bit more combo-y than, um, this is more of a standard con Grixis control in the the old school style, right? Like when I say old school, it's not even that old. It's like maybe, you know, three years ago, whatever it was when Grixis was good after um, Death Rite Shaman got banned. <coughs> Surgical is really good right now for Lowe's Wasteland, even Underground Sea the Cheese Doom. Yeah, for sure. Um, so speaking as, as somebody from on that side, I have definitely had my fair share of wins against Doomsday when just uh, Assassin's Trophy on their land, and they just lose, right? If they try to go for a fast Doomsday. Um, for sure, yeah. Ley Lines is one of those cards where, like, um, you either love them like I do, or you hate them. Um, there's really no in-between, from what I've seen. And... Um, uh, Francisco is on the surgical side, which is fine. I think, um, especially in a control shell, I think that is more uh, reasonable because 
I think the ley line or the decks that benefit most by ley, with ley lines are decks that don't want to play a, a longer game. So what I mean by that is like ley lines have typically been best in the stompy or the combo shells. What I mean by that is like elves, in my opinion, like is like good with ley lines because you're trying to end the game fast with natural order anyway. So you just want, you know, a few turns or something like moon stompy or eldrazi which again you're trying to end the game fast so not many turns passes where you're going to accidentally draw your ley line right um the longer the game the worse ley line is in general but uh yeah this looks really solid obviously strix right now is very good against murktai region which is kind of the um premier uh beater so to speak or the premier uh aggro a threat in the uh matchup oh sorry in legacy so this definitely lines up well uh i like that all the thank you for the follow uh heathen king uh you know 666 all of the opposing removal is stranded here pretty much so that that's pretty pretty sweet one thing that i know that is um a content contentious point uh with um whole breacher is you turn on opposing removal, right? Like, and here is the clean cut uh, classic, no removal targets for your opponent, so to speak. Um, obviously, I say that with consumes all being a creature later on, but that's just gravy on top. Um, yeah, so anybody have questions for Francisco and this Grixis list, or I'll bring up my elf list again. Um, honestly, like, we went 3-2 the first league. It probably should have been, in my opinion, 4-1. Uh, we, 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 we lost to some nut draws from Goblins. I don't, I don't really mind that. But the, the one that hurts is losing to the Humans player. Because I think that's a good matchup. But I think, we, I think we saw the raw power of this deck, right? Like, in terms of not having to fetch Bayou is, like, a pretty big deal, in my opinion. And I think I, I like the fact that Boseju... Okay, that that reminds me. One tweet that I saw when Boseju got spoiled was Francisco tweeted out, "This is the best addition to Amulet Amulet Titan um, since Once Upon a Time," and that includes uh, what's it called the the three drop. Um, I am blanking on the name at the moment. The two four that turns all your lands into uh, all basic land types. Uh, Dryad of uh, uh, the Ilzian Grove, right? So Francisco said this is the best card since Once Upon a Time, better than Dryad. Uh, I don't know if Francisco still believes that, but I actually initially thought, oh, you can't get this with Reclaimer. So I was kind of down on it. And then I talked to my good friend Jax, who was like, this card is better than Assassin's Trophy. And Assassin's Trophy at the time was already very good in Elves. Um, and lo and behold, I think as of right now, this card is... The most important card, similar to Amulet Titan, it is the most important card printed for elves since Once Upon a Time. And I'm aware, just like Francisco, this includes Alasaur Shepherd and includes Endurance. This, because this solves a lot of the problems for elves that they just did not have the room to, to solve in the past. And probably the closest thing we've ever had to Force of Will. In that, obviously it's a different card than Force of Will, but the function is the same. It's a main deck flexible disruption piece that um, essentially does not really take up opportunity costs. So the closest comparison is probably Reclaimer because it's Graveyard Hate, but this card answers a lot of the cards that Reclaimer typically cannot answer to, uh, otherwise. So in my opinion, the best card for Elves since Once Upon a Time. Keep in mind, Reclaimer was printed before Once Upon a Time. Because I think Reclaimer is better than Baseju. But I do think Baseju is better than Endurance and better than Outsource Shepherd. And that is uh, quite the words. For anybody who is a blue player, you can just ask how much they hate Outsource Shepherd. Or Chalice player, for, for, uh, for, that, for whatever that's worth too. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, let's go back to the league. We beat, I already forgot, but we beat Grixis Control. Uh, we beat... Uh, what is it called? The um, the Swift reconfiguration deck. I think they were on. What were they on? I don't remember. TS and then we beat whatever. So pretty good overall matchup profiles. 
We didn't play against Delver, and I think the Delver matchup is um, probably fine. I've mentioned before that you have to play very tight to beat Delver. Um, if you don't play tight, you're probably not favored. Uh, if you do play tight, if both sides play tight, you're probably only a slight, slightly ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eric Landon is uh, uh, is back too, so there is that. I think they were playing Hogak. That's what it was. And did anybody have any questions for this list? Uh, honestly, the trap and the, the ley lines could just be like another trap or another ley line, depending what you want to skew against. But I think the force of vigors are pretty important, and I think the thought seasons are pretty important. Uh, like right now, I think the uncuttable cards from the sideboard are there's, in my opinion, given the current state of elves, probably eight cards with a ninth that is close. So the four Thought Seizes, the three Endurances, and Progenitus, in my opinion, are locked. And I think the Karakas, given the current um, configuration that we have Baseju May now, is probably a lock as well. And then everything else is like, negotiable. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I had a lot of fun today for sure. Uh, let's see who is playing Magic, who should I stream, uh, raid. Tunneling Cat. So Tunneling Cat looks like they're just starting out. I like to help out, um, you know, anybody else who is just starting with streaming. So I'll raid the Tunneling Cat uh, if there are no questions. So yeah, great, great to see uh, Francisco jumpy. Actually, one one thing before uh, I raid. Here again are my socials. Socials, excuse me. And if you like the content you saw today, uh, please give me uh, a subscription here with Amazon Prime or if you have one. Um, also, you can access uh, Patreon or YouTube. I post all my stuff on YouTube for free. Um, so all the replays are on Twitch and YouTube. So um, you want to just catch that. Um, probably best way to learn is honestly watching the, the replays on YouTube. And then secondary is probably, I would say, Patreon with uh, Discord third, and then obviously nothing on Twitter, right? Well, Twitter is how you get my info. But with that said, I will go ahead and raid the Tiny Link Cat. And thank you for everybody for coming by. Oops, wrong one.